Welcome to another edition of the 2020 Art in Action Artist Showcase. I'm Executive Director Tom Figarelli. As many of you know, Art in Action is a great component of the Russell Exhibition and Sale. Um, and as also you know, we had to postpone that from what was scheduled in March to now what will occur in September. And what will occur is a purely remote event. So that means with Art in Action, while you won't have an opportunity to see the artist's work live, hopefully through these showcases, you still have a chance to get a sense of the artist's creativity, their spirit, where they're at in the world, um, and just to have a touch of that informal dialogue that is an important part of Art in Action. Uh, we want to thank our sponsor of Art in Action, DA Davidson Companies, for underwriting that event, as well as supporting all of our educational programming at the CM Russell Museum. Thanks to their generosity and support, we're able to advance the art and soul of the American West. I'm joined today by artist Ben Peace. Ben, thanks for being a part of this. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your time as well. No, it's our pleasure. How are you doing, given everything going on in the world today? You know, I feel... I feel like I'm running through the world with my eyes closed, you know, bumping into something here, you know, hitting my foot on something, breaking a little toe there. But ultimately, <laughs> um, experiencing the world and, and my senses and my sight and feel. Um, so expecting a new baby here any day. I'm in a residency at the Rocky Mountain College uh, here in Billings, Montana. Just came off of a residency at the Yellowstone Art Museum, also in Billings. Uh, and trying to work through in a lot of different, uh, a lot of subtle ways through the times of COVID and a global pandemic, uh, economy, um, being a self-employed artist, you know, the, the, the whole ringer, you know, so just like the rest of us, we've all got our own things we're moving through. It's interesting yeah, that, times. That's right. Interesting times is, is the, the right way to describe it. Do you find that just by keeping yourself so busy, I mean, professionally um, and then creatively as well as now uh, a dad third time over. Um, do you yeah. find like that helps you kind of navigate some of these peculiar uh, pressures we've got in, in today's age? Well, staying busy was never one of uh, the things that I've been trying to um, <laughs> confront. That's always, that's something that I've been learning to try to stay a little bit further away from these days because uh, for example, I moved away from Bozeman, Montana uh, recently because it was too busy, because it was, let's go for a drink here. Let's meet about this. Let's have some tea, coffee, you know, and it was every single day. And I'm not used to that coming from a small native community here in Montana, the Crow Indian Reservation. It's uh, more of an organic existence. And I think if, if you get too far into saying yes to every project that confronts you, you get burnt out, you know, and, you get spread a little, a little bit thin, and you're not able to give your, your full mind and your full spirit to everything. So I've been learning to slow down and learning to, especially in the time of COVID, spend more time with my family, uh, my immediate family, spend more time out on the land, fishing, hunting, uh, hiking, um, and uh, finding spirituality throughout this. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think you just hit on some hallmarks of the important things that many of us need to be doing to try to endure these times and really to, you know, in, try to enrich ourselves. Given the circumstances, I think there's an opportunity for us to find some deeper truths in each of our lives. And I think what you just mentioned there are, are guide points for each of us to really consider how we mm -hmm. can incorporate those into our walk. Um, you, you know, you, you mentioned, Ben, you know, just the, the dynamics of grabbing some time to visit here and there with folks. And um, mm -hmm. certainly that's something that, you know, you value, uh, many artists value. That's really one of the main uh, components of art in action. Um, as an artist, as you're trying to produce and finish a piece of work, but still, you know, have some conversation with someone at a quick draw, quick finish event, uh, what draws you to that type of format? You know, working with uh, events like the art in action or quick draws or quick finish, events it's it's really not too far out of my own wheelhouse of creativity when uh, making an artwork now whether that's a painting whether i'm writing whether i'm sculpting or uh, speaking i really try to instead focus on the experience of it instead of uh, productivity instead of getting stuff done i really enjoy sharing words and sharing knowledge and I enjoy moving paint around on the canvas, and it's really about the action for me. So, uh, what's more pure than raw creativity? 
uh, watching something come from here to whatever substrate you're working on, you know, or something like this, just come out and flow. Uh, and what's more pure than sharing a conversation, sharing an experience with somebody. And when you combine those two things, to me, that's a beautiful thing, I think, because yes, I can be focused totally uh, into my painting, into the objective creativity and the skills that it takes to create something like these paintings behind me. But then, you know, I'm closed off to the world around me and that's okay, but I enjoy uh, art and action type events for that reason, because you get to have one-on-ones with, with other human beings, which you don't usually get in the studio because it's a lonely existence, <laughs> you know? And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's one of the reasons that I really love it. Um, it's a place where artists can come and sort of be themselves and people can see uh, who are not exactly uh, knowledgeable or trained or um, exposed to the ways of artists to have a glimpse into their life and modes of creativity. So. Well, that very well said. I mean, very well said. And I think that certainly aligns with, um, you know, what we understand about the spirit of Charlie Russell, you know, that he mm. enjoyed, you know, good company, good friendship, and that, um, you know, mm. kind of enriched him as an artist. Do you find that some of that conversation also enriches your work? Do you feel that your, your end product is better if you have kind of the influences and spirits of, of everybody around you kind of factoring into the overall effort? You know, I do, because it's, like I said, it's about the experience for me. And if I focus on just, say, making the face proportional, uh, proportionate, then, like I said, I'm closed off. And, for example, like in, in the piece behind me here, uh, similar to the one I have in the auction, uh, I have poetry written in the piece. But this poetry is not something that I publish. It's not even something that I say to other people. I leave it for the viewers, for the people who are going to experience this work. And so it inherently carries something with it. Now you could say it's a, it's a form of power or it's a part of just another part of my own creativity in, in poetry form mixed with painting. There's something there that, that goes with it wherever this painting goes. And so quick draw events, quick finishes, they all function in that way for me. It's about that experience and that time spent making something, you know, molding something. And uh, if somebody comes and talks to me, hey, I like that red. It might change my mind in about 10 minutes to use a little bit more or a little bit less, you know. Sure. And there is, there is influence and I think it's valuable. Well, that's great. I mean, there's, there, there's so much sincerity in that then too, right? Is that you kind of mm -hmm. leave yourself more vulnerable as an artist. And well, as people provide some insights, you know, you're going to maybe take them or leave them, but you're mm -hmm. at the end of the day vulnerable and that is then translated into your work. So I, that's fantastic. True. Yeah. Early on when I started quick draws, I mean, this, this art and action will, coming up, it'll be maybe my, uh, maybe my 30th uh, quick draw or, or wow. quick finish. And I, early on, I started being kind of self-conscious. You know, I'm, I'm in the room with all of these other professional artists. I'm in the room with curators and directors and all sorts of other people who are exposed to the, to the world of art. And they're going to see the way I mix my, paint, my paints. You know, they're going to see the types of uh, substrates that I'm working on. Because at that time, I had no idea what I was doing, really. And it's, it's always a learning game for me. And recently, I've just decided, hey, enjoy what you're doing. Because this may be the last time you get to do it. So I love doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. I, I appreciate the the notion of not taking any of it for granted, right? Each of it is its own enriched experience. You know, I see you're, you're surrounded by a few pieces. Um, what, what um, if you could share with folks watching today, what, what's got your attention? What piece of, of art are you focused on today? Well, the one behind me, I've been talking about a little bit. I've been focused on this one for uh, some, some days and it just, it decided to come out of me uh, just recently. And it's of a, a man from my tribe of Salaga people, and his name is Bird All Over the Ground. And he was a dignitary chief of our people. Um, and I, I, I did a, a line drawing, a pen and ink, maybe three, four months ago, and it was really sort of architectural. And I wanted to uh, further that conversation I had with the pen and the paper in my mind. So I made it larger and uh, 
yeah, this is just plain oil on canvas. And I have some of these uh, lines of poetry throughout the painting. And I'm really just trying to focus on these interactions with the, with the paint and the brush. Um, building textures, uh, seeing where some parts of my underpaintings are coming through, and really finding a way to build a relationship with it. And same with this, uh, this other one behind me here. And I'll just uh, take the iPad off the, off the holder for a second so you can sort of get an up and close look at what's going on here. So these are all uh, paint daubs that are about a, about a quarter inch off the canvas. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, that stands out. Yeah. And so that's another one. And this is all pretty decently painterly. And I've been also exploring a new series. It's called uh, Indians on Horses in Their Natural Habitat. It's where I find paintings at secondhand stores or antique stores and I buy them. And then I superimpose my own lettering, oil painting lettering on the top. And so I'm giving- Wow, that's fantastic. A very um, literal representation of what I see as a Native American um, who does art in the Western art game. And uh, yeah, so. That's, that's kind of what I'm working on. I'm working on a, a painting right now. It's not really in well light, so I won't show you, but it's uh, based on florals, floral beadwork designs. Sorry for the shaky camera. It's uh, part of one of these things of COVID. You learn how to, how to use Zoom. And, <laughs> yeah, well, we do. So it's, it's an extension of a series I started uh, called my Indigenous Goddesses series. What was featured at the Chicago Field Museum last year, right before COVID, uh, shut everything down. Uh, the Upsalagat Women and Warriors Show exhibition open at the Chicago Field Museum. And presently, there's a 40 foot by maybe 100 foot banner of my work on the front of the Chicago Field Museum with uh, Upsalagat Crow women uh, on horses, five of them, uh, all with these halos. And so, what I'm doing with these halos, I'm asking questions of cultural contrasts. I'm looking at our, the cyclical nature of our people combined with uh, the nature of West, the Western world, right? Um, asking questions of Christianity, you know, recognizing the good that it's brought us and recognizing the bad that it's, it's, it's brought us. And really saying that we as Absalaga Crow people, we see women being holy beings, right? Uh, their ability to give birth, the ability to be that cultural glue that, that keeps people together and holds culture and, and uh, really perpetuates human life and experience. And so I'm not deifying them and I'm not um, sanctifying these, these women, but I'm saying that yes, we see women as being holy beings. And so it started there and now I'm adding uh, florals that are inspired by beadwork, traditional crow beadwork from my people. And I'm asking questions now of beauty. What is beauty and why is beauty beautiful, right? Why does the Western world see uh, beauty uh, from in another culture and how do we see beauty in ourselves right we have uh, things like the elk teeth dress we have things like the, the war bonnet as you see behind me and a lot of people outside of my own culture see this as beautiful right but there's ways that have been built over millennia about the meanings of these things from the beadwork to the feathers to the headpiece you know, even to the way that we paint our faces. And those are forms of beauty and they have meaning. Uh, and so I'm asking questions with these florals because the flower is inherently a beautiful thing, right? Many cultures across the world say that flowers are direct representations of a deity, of God. Um, and so I'm using the flower to, to sort of move deeper into my mind and really ask questions as well as having fun painting. You know? So. Well, Ben, I appreciate you sharing that. And, and I got to say, I'm so intrigued by that approach um, with the halos. And, you know, I, I think what you've articulated, you know, so well is that I mean, this is really why we should celebrate art and, and that, particularly Western art. I mean, because it should be asking ourselves very complex questions, uh, complex questions as much to do with our past as our present and mm -hmm. trying to juxtapose those questions with our own inherent biases and our own beliefs and our own walk. And gosh, I mean, if we can do that with art, I mean, as you noted, we get a better understanding of who we are 
as, mm -hmm. as individuals. And that can, you know, break down some barriers in how we communicate with each other and just Definitely. how we build a more inclusive world. I mean, that's, that's beautiful. I mean, thank you. Thank you for just sharing that with us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I mean, we have to realize that we're growing individuals. We're growing human beings and we never stop changing. You know, we're always in flux. Our minds, our bodies, our realities, everything's always changing. You know, not, not one thing in my life, and I'm only 30, but not one, not one thing has ever changed, stayed the same. You know, I, as I read in, uh, books of, in, about history, or if I look into uh, contemporary times, or if I'm thinking about what's going to happen in the future, especially with COVID and my family, how we're going to move forward on our path, I notice that we all have to continue changing. You know, we can't stay set in our ways. And so yeah. uh, that, that thought really led to my first ever sculpture too. And that came in the form of a 12 foot sculpture at the Chicago Field Museum of a man and a woman standing back to back, but both stepping forward at the same time. And wow. uh, you can look the show up, you could probably Google it, but uh, Upsalaga Women and Warriors, it's now open, the Chicago Field Museum just opened uh, last week. Else. Well, when we share this video, we'll make sure that we share a link uh, to that show as well on our Great social media. You. So folks that are watching this can, can get a sense of that. And I know that, you know, um, people will really enjoy getting um, mm. a, a view of your work there. You know, you, Ben, I think kind of alluded to it, but, you know, just how do you take an inspiration, a moment or an idea, a thought, an experience, and translate that into your work? Is there one process or way you do that or is it a series of efforts if you could just share that with folks i think they'd find that fascinating yeah really for me uh finding inspiration and, and trying to translate that in my my paintings or my sculptures or my drawings or, or whatever it be um i really try to focus on the organic nature of how my mind works say if i want to make a circle i make a circle say if i want to change the, the hue on a, on, a, on a face you know um, I just let it happen and I try not to get too technical with my words. I try to leave room for um, abstract thought. And that's where the, the writing and poetry just started to happen in my words. I just, I'm thinking about this and thinking about this so much that when I went home, I'd be just exhausted because my mind is going a million miles an hour. And uh, I just decided, hey, one day, leave it here. Leave it where it came from, you know. And so I put it on the painting and I was able to walk away from that thought and move on to new thoughts, uh, whether those were more simple or more complex. I think uh, finding organic modes of, of creativity in, in anything that we do, whether it's business or finance or design, you know, or painting um, or parenting, uh, organic ways. So, Yeah, no, I think there's a lot of truth in that, letting the moment breathe, right? So then, yeah. you know, you can kind of listen to it and be influenced by it kind of like a good bottle of wine or, or whiskey you know <laughs> let it breathe yeah yeah no no doubt no doubt and i i think implied within that is is listening a little bit and that's something i think um is sadly at a at a at a premium in our world mm. yeah listening as as far as you know i've learned growing up in indigenous culture and uh traditions uh, one of the things that the, my elders uh, sort of pounded into my head, not physically but uh, or literally, but mentally, <laughs> um, spiritually, was that we need to listen and, and practice deep listening, whether that's to your child, whether that's to the land or greater society um, or your spouse. Um, practice deeper listening and don't exactly hear what they're saying, but hear what they're feeling, you know. And uh, that's kind of what I try to do with my paintings. I try to see what's going to come next and uh, try to make those things meet up. But it doesn't always happen. I won't say it's always a successful time in the studio. Sometimes I uh, throw my paintbrushes at the wall or accidentally <laughs> snap one and um, walk away from the painting. It's a, it's a love-hate relationship, just like anybody else has with their, their life's work. You know? um, and I don't feel like I ever want to do anything different other than creating and thinking about what I'm doing. So uh, I'm lucky. Not everybody is as, as lucky as I am. And I recognize that, you know, especially from my own community. And so I try to speak on, on, on a higher level than just for myself. But then again, you know, I can speak for myself quite well as, as well. 
Well, Ben, thank you for sharing all of this with us today. And that, you know, speaking of lucky, I think we're lucky to have you as part of our larger community of artists at the CM Russell Museum. So thank you for your support of Art in Action and your friendship to the CM Russell Museum. We deeply appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, as we say, many a hoes. Many thanks, many a hoes. So I well, appreciate um, just being able to rub elbows, you know, and, and uh, being in, in, in talks and concerns of uh, uh, artists who are so amazing. And really, I think that uh, we all try to make changes and we all try to grow in our own ways. And I think being able to see other people uh, changing their styles or seeing other people just execute something so amazing, amazingly in, in such a great way, is it's also a gift for me to be, you know, uh, just in the throes with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, well said. I, we are so fortunate to have such a great community of artists that you know, in, enrich each other, as you noted, enrich the patrons that participate in these events and really elevate our mission as a museum. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we greatly appreciate that. Uh, you know, we just want to say thank you again uh, to you, Ben, for your time, your talent. Thank you for everyone for watching this artist showcase. Uh, I just want to recognize DA Davidson companies for their support of Art in Action, as well as Stockman Bank, who is the sponsor uh, for Ben Peace in Art in Action and uh, Stockman Support benefits the CM Russell Museum as well. So thank you all again. Thanks, Ben, and everybody be well. Take care. Thank you.